In this video, we're going to add effects and use presets to change the visual appearance of the footage or assets we're going to be working with within After Effects. One of the most powerful elements within After Effects are its effects and presets we can apply to footage. We can apply multiple effects to footage to create really diverse and interesting looks. The range of effects available is also vastly larger than that within Premiere. So even if it's simple things, quite often it's easier to bring it into After Effects as we're able to create a more nuanced and fine-tuned visual appearance than what we'd be able to create within Premiere. Effects and presets are handled slightly differently to in Premiere, but it is quite familiar. There is a panel titled Effects and Presets. Within here, there is a large number of subcategories organizing all of our effects. And within those, you will find all the different variants and versions of that category of effect. Quite often, it is easier if you know that what the effect you're looking for is called. If you're looking for an effect and you don't know what it's called, quite often, a quick guess will get you most of the way there and you'll still be able to find the effect that you're looking for. So here you can see we have a composition that has a number of effects applied to three identical clips so we can contrast and compare different effect styles. Now we're going to create this, but we're also going to have a look at how to apply individual effects, how effect layering alters the visual appearance, how the order in which we apply effects changes the visual appearance, and how we can then mask and keyframe effects as well so that they're only applied over a certain period in time or over a certain part of an image. So let's get started. I currently have a blank composition. I'm going to take this video clip. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to scale it to fit. I'm going to play it through. Now when we apply effects, we will find them in the effects and presets panel. Once you've found the effect you're looking for, to apply it, we can do that in one of two ways. We can either click and drag that effect directly onto an asset on our composition. If there aren't many elements within your composition, this can be perfectly acceptable, but sometimes when there's lots of elements there, it can be difficult to apply the effect to the correct one. That being the case, we sometimes come down to the layers and we'll apply it to the layer directly. It is also important to note that some effects are time specific. This mostly applies to presets, as with effects, it usually applies to the entirety of the clip. So it can sometimes be good practice to ensure that our playhead is either at the correct moment in time where we want a preset to begin from, or at the beginning of a composition so that any effect or preset we apply will be applied to the entirety of it. A good number of effects, when you apply them, will not have a visual impact immediately. That's because their settings will be dialed to zero. We will then have to go into that effect and adjust those settings to then apply the visual effect to the degree that we want. We'll find the effect controls up here in the effect controls panel. It's normally next to the project panel. The effect controls will show you the effects applied to any individual layer you have selected. Within there, every effect will have a different set of controls depending on what that effect is. But every single effect will have this FX off on toggle. This button will turn the effect off and on so you can see how it's working. Every effect will also have a set of attributes. Adjusting these will change the outcome of the effect so that you're able to create the visual image that you're looking to create. We can also apply multiple effects. For example, if I select add grain, if I zoom in on my composition, I can adjust the intensity of the grain. And if I don't like an effect or I feel I've added too many effects and I'm not getting where I want it to be, I can delete effects by highlighting them in the effect controls and pressing the backspace key to remove them. As well as all the individual effects, we also have presets. Presets are combinations of, of effects that allow us to quickly and easily create different visual appearances. We can then go into the effect controls and adjust those to fine tune how we want our image to look. A number of these are very specific. There are presets specific to text, transitions, and backgrounds, for example. But if I'm going to look at creative, I'll find lots to do with how the image 
looks to deal with color, tone, contrast, things of that nature. So if I take this one, for example, Bloom, Brights and Darks, it will then adjust the image in the exact same way that I was able to, with a single effect, drag it on. I can do the same with a preset, but instead of applying one effect, it has in fact applied a number of effects with settings already dialed in. I can then turn parts of those off or on to fine tune how the image looks, but also if I change the order of these effects, I can change the visual appearance. This is because effects are applied in order from the top to the bottom. So as I change the order, what the next effect has to work with alters and thus changes the visual appearance of my footage. So the sequence that your effects go in is very important as well when we're adding multiple effects. And often what works best isn't a single effect, but a combination of effects in a particular order specific to your project creates an outcome which is unique to your work and isn't simply a recognizable effect or series of effects. That being said, presets are still a very useful tool for getting your work to a point very quickly, which you can then go and have a look and see how that effect has been created and then tweak and adjust to kind of create that visual look, which is specific to your project. For example, if I look in special effects, I can find a bad TV effect. I can see how that's been created and I can then perhaps remove some elements of it, adjust some elements of it to get what is still an appearance of bad CCTV footage with scan lines, but it's not as intense and it's creating a, a variant of that effect that's recognizable to the viewer, but also not instantly recognizable to an After Effects user as being that specific preset. As presets are simply combinations of effects, if you wish to reset the footage, we simply select and delete those effects to bring us back to our stock clip. Another thing we can do with effects is we can keyframe them to change how that effect functions over time. Just like with the standard attributes such as scale, position, and rotation, everything we can change about an effect boils down to a number which can be keyframed. How blurred something is, how much shift to one spectrum or another, all of these things boil down to a single number, a single slider, which can be keyframed. So let's look at how we can do that. I'm going to take a blur and apply it to this footage. And in the effect controls, you'll see we have blurriness. And as we increase that number, the image becomes more or less blurred, as we would expect. But next to it is our toggle animation on off stopwatch. So for example, if I place my playhead at the point I want my footage to start to get blurry, I can turn keyframing on, move my playhead forward in time, increase the blur, and now that footage will blur over time. So this would be a great way, for example, to find some text that I wanted to put on the screen to really clarify a detail of information. I could blur out that background to make sure that that information can be read and it's legible, it's not getting lost in the visual detail of this shot. We're not limited in the number of keyframes we can have. So I can have footage go blurry, not blurry, have the blur fluctuate, Now you'll notice that the blur goes right to the edge and creates a slight feather. So sometimes we have to combine this with some of the standard attributes we looked at before, such as scale, just to push that over the edge so the blur that's brought in doesn't feather the edge of our frame. As I come into my timeline, you'll also see that we now have an effects entry. This gives us access to all of our effects that are applied as we open that up, we get the same controls, but we now have access to the timeline. So we can see the individual keyframes. We can move them around. 
We can delete some of them if we wish. And we can also perform keyframe assists. To adjust how that keyframe functions, we can set it to easing in or easing out. And the exact same function. So we can set our keyframes, for example, to ease in, out, or easy ease in the exact same way because the keyframe is the keyframe and how we adjust them is the same regardless of what is being keyframed. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a mat. Now, a mat allows us to crop part of our image off. And we're going to do that using the pen tool. Now, for this to work, we have to ensure we have the layer we want to create a mat on selected. If we don't have a layer selected, then it will just draw a shape like this. I'll start to draw a shape. If we have a layer selected, however, I can draw my shape and when I close the loop, it will act as a mat. So the video will only be visible within the shape. To create the video clip that we had at the beginning of the exercise, I'm going to take my street scene, I'm going to copy it and paste it three times. And the background layer, I'm going to leave covering the entire frame. In the middle layer, I'm going to draw a mask that covers the one corner third. And on the top layer, I'm going to do the same but on the opposite corner third. So when all of them are visible, there's going to be no difference. Everything lines up perfectly. But as I hide the background layer, it becomes quite clear that we have our three different parts. And they're going to apply a different set of effects to each of the three layers, and that'll give us our banding effect. So we're going to start with this top one. I'm going to apply a color offset Again, I'm going to phase the green one way and the red another. With the color offset applied, I'm also going to look for a bloom. I'm going to bloom the brights and the darks. In my background layer, I'm going to come to my image presets. And in special effects, I will find one for a special kind of night vision effect. And because the green is quite similar, I'm going to change that green here. I'm going to change it to a blue. So that it's not too similar in color tone to the stripe here, so it becomes quite clear that it's different. I'm also going to increase the size of the bandings. So that'd be an effect called Venetian blinds. So I increase that you see the stripes get larger. I think I'm going to go from five to about eight just to make it a bit more clear and legible. And then we're on to our last corner here. And I'm going to use a bloom brights and darks. I'm going to apply it. But again, I'm going to do a little bit more than that. I'm also going to add a glow effect. And again, as you see, as I move the sequence of the effects, the overall outcome changes quite dramatically as well. And that then gives us our final outcome. Now this will take a wee while to play through for the first time as it renders up our green bar there, creating our RAM preview. But once that's finished, it'll then play nice and smoothly and be able to clearly see kind of the visual outcome for this combination of effects of these three different layers. So that is effects and presets. We looked at how to apply an effect and where we can find the controls to adjust how that effect is functioning. We applied multiple effects and explored how the sequence of effects will change the visual outcome and also looked at keyframing those effects so that they can alter and change over time. 
We'll look to how we can use presets to start us off, but also ensuring that we change those presets so that we had something that was unique to our project. And we also very briefly looked at masks so that we're able to separate this image off into three distinct stripes. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.